Hi, my name's Michael, I'm from Amber and I'm a part of the SmartShift team here. Today I wanted to talk about solar containment. I want to talk about what it is, how it works and how you can take advantage of it for your house. Solar containment is the process of us telling your inverter to limit its solar production so that there's no excess solar being sent back to the grid. Why we'd need to do this is because when you're an Amber customer, you get access to the wholesale rate of power as determined by the energy market. This goes for importing from the grid, but of course also exporting back to the grid. There are times where the price to export it might actually fall into the negative, which means there's an oversupply of power in the grid, meaning that anything you send back to the grid in that time is chipping away at the credits that you might have earned rather than earning you more credits. When our smart shift automation sees that the value of exports falls to the negative, we'll send through a command to your inverter uh, telling it to start doing curtailment. So we don't tell it much more specifics beyond, hey, you need to start doing curtailment for us. And then your inverter will interpret that and do what it can to limit exports back to the grid. There are two ways that curtailment could take place. Uh, one is called load following curtailment, which is more advanced and one which is called on-off curtailment, which is a lot more simple. Load following curtailment is essentially us telling your inverter to slow down your solar production rate so that it exactly matches the current household demand. By doing that, it means that there's no solar production left over and there's nothing else that needs to get sent back to the grid. For your site to be able to do load following containment, your inverter needs to know how much energy your house is actually consuming at any given point. So there is sometimes a requirement for extra hardware to be installed for load following to be enabled. For the more simple on-off curtailment, we essentially do just tell your inverter to switch off so that there's no more solar being produced and not an excess of all of this energy that needs to be sent somewhere so it gets sent back to the grid. So we say to your inverter to switch off the inverter and it knows that it's probably going to need to import a tiny little bit from the grid to cover your household load in that time. But SmartShift will try and make the smartest decision for you at that point and it's always considering the best financial outcome for you. To start the enrollment process, go through the Amber app, go to the devices tab uh, and look for an option that says add a battery or solar device. Once we receive your serial number or the required details for your inverter, we'll kick off the registration process, which is essentially us reaching out to your manufacturer and requesting access to control your inverter. Once that's done, you'll get notified uh, that your enrollment is complete and it's ready to be used with automated solar containment. So when you go and look at the Amber app after that, you might see in the devices tab a few different statuses related to solar containment. The first being that automated solar containment is active. Of course, that just means it is actively curtailing uh, and it is limiting your solar production to avoid anything getting sent back to the grid. You might also see warming up, which is essentially saying that we're waiting for your hardware to respond. It could mean for one that we're approaching a period where the value of energy is negative. So it's not a good idea to export to the grid. And curtailment is basically just warming up. It knows this price period is coming up. So it's getting curtailment ready to happen for you. It could also mean that we're already in that period where it's not gonna be a good idea for you to export to the grid. It could be already in that period, but your battery still needs to charge up. So essentially it's sitting there waiting for your battery to fully charge before then activating curtailment and yeah, slowing down your solar production after that. It's expected to start curtailing pretty soon and you should see it then change over to the active status as well. If you see standby, this means that we know that your site's enrolled in curtailment, but the curtailment isn't active right now, either because the price to export to the grid is good and you can earn credits from it, so there's no point curtailing it, or it means that there's spare battery capacity or no solar generation, so there's nothing to curtail anyway. If you see that curtailment is deactivated, that means that most likely you've switched off the curtailment option from the smart shift settings in the settings tab. Uh, so go and check that if you're seeing that it's deactivated and you're not sure why or you might see that there's an error. So if you see there's a solar containment error, there's some other issue with the control of your inverter. Potentially we can't communicate with it. It might be offline or another issue affecting our control of your inverter. So have a look at our other troubleshooting tips for some more detail on how to get that fixed. So we'd also love to run through a few common questions that we get about curtailment. The number one being, why am I still exporting some energy back to the grid? So the two main reasons for this are down to the, the speed of how quickly your inverter can react to these signals, right? 
So the first being that there might be a really quick change in the amount of demand coming from your household load. So for example, if you put on a energy heavy um, appliance in the house, uh, that's gonna start drawing a lot more energy instantly. So for that to be covered by solar production, your inverter needs to respond to that new load and tell your panels, oh, we've got more space now, we can increase the amount of solar production. That can take a little bit of time depending on the inverter. Sometimes it can be instant, sometimes it can take a couple of minutes for the whole system to start generating solar again. Our systems responding to the pricing changes are pretty quick and basically instant, but then getting that command from our systems to your manufacturer's systems and then to your inverter to start curtailment can take some time. Sometimes it's a couple of minutes, sometimes it's 10 to 15 minutes. But big picture, the amount of solar that's gonna be exported during that really small window where curtailment isn't activated, it's hopefully gonna be pretty much negligible compared to the amount of money that's being saved by curtailing your solar for the remainder of the curtailment window. So that's the goal for curtailment is to maximize the amount of energy and the amount of credits that you can get for that energy going back to the grid at the right time, meaning it's putting you in the best financial position possible. One of the other questions that we often get is people asking about why they're importing from the grid when the sky is beautiful, sunny, um, there's plenty of solar that should be getting generated, but we're not using the solar and I've also got a full battery. With that in mind, SmartShift is gonna be making the best financial decision possible for you in that moment. The choices SmartShift will have is to either switch off solar production uh, and import a little bit from the grid to cover your household load, or it's gonna keep exporting to the grid at a negative value for you so that it can use your solar to cover the household load, but knowing that it's taking a little bit of a penalty by exporting to the grid. So it's gonna compare those options and figure out what's the most profitable for you. Usually it's gonna result in switching off solar and then importing a little bit from the grid because when the price to, or the value of exports goes into the negative, that would generally mean as well the price to import from the grid is actually really cheap as well. So that's financially a way better decision. There's a few specific requirements around the eligibility of different devices. We've got a big list published on our website and available through our FAQs. So it does differ for different manufacturers and they all have a few different requirements. So check that list and you can reach out to us if you need any clarification on those points. Once you've enrolled your device uh, via the Amber app, uh, that kicks off the registration process, which is essentially us requesting access to your inverter via the manufacturer. So that process can be almost instant or it can take a few weeks, uh, depending on the manufacturer and any obstacles that might pop up. But once it is live and all connected up as we expect, you better see it on the live screen in the devices tab. And you might see a few different things indicating that curtailment is active or just about to be active. So the first one literally saying automated solar curtailment is active. Uh, this means that your system has been told to curtail and it's gonna be activating either load following curtailment or on off curtailment as we spoke about. And if you check the power flow diagram, then you should see that uh, the solar production has changed to either match your household load or has been switched off entirely. But you might also see that there's an error with solar curtailment and you should see that pop up pretty clearly in the devices section as well. Um, if you see that pop up, we've definitely got a few troubleshooting steps that we can recommend for you. Uh, and you can find details of that on our website as well. Mm -hmm.